Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. I am out in Beaverton. My second child has mock trial practice right now, and this is the time in which I have to film. I wanted to take a few minutes today and uh, talk about a post in a Facebook group that I think was really important. And it's not often that I say that about Facebook in general, but this group is called Phytomimetics. And you know, there's a lot of funny quips and memes and some good discussion. And then there's also a lot of snark about permaculture. And I think that it can be easy for those of us who practice permaculture to get defensive. I actually talked pretty extensively in the comment section on my recent video about unschooling. Why is it when someone criticizes a system in which we choose to participate that we take it as a personal attack on ourselves? And that if we feel that the systems that we are engaging in are immune to criticism, we have a real problem. Um, I also have a video you should check out on gurus and permaculture. It's the same thing there. When we feel that a leader or a philosophy or um, some kind of charismatic figure or some practice, be it spiritual or agricultural, is immune from criticism. We are setting ourselves up for failure and we're setting that dynamic up for abuse and misinformation. So in this group, there was this post, um, someone said, so I know nothing about permaculture, but I heard it's wrong. What is wrong with it? Signed, a sweet summer child. And their post came came about because this group is so big on like digging on permaculture on knocking it on saying it's a bunch of nonsense or woo or criticizing people who practice permaculture now as someone who has practiced permaculture for more than 20 years it would be easy for me to get defensive and say this philosophy and design system that has been so important to me um i, I take offense when it is criticized that would be very easy to do. And I would encourage you, if you are somebody who has that kind of natural knee-jerk reaction to just pause and say like, what is it that folks are taking issue with that might have a grain of truth to it? And what can we do uh, with that information, with that evaluation, and how can we follow the permaculture principle of apply self-regulation and accept feedback? So let's dive in. Okay, I will link down below in the description to the thread itself so that you can. I left a lengthy reply, but before I get into that, I wanna say that having read through all of the comments, there were some common themes of what are the reasons that people feel turned off to permaculture or feel skeptical of it or have beef with permaculture. First of all, permaculture is a design philosophy. It is a system through which we create regenerative ways of engaging with the planet and building resilient communities of people. It's not owned by anybody. Uh, Bill Mollison and David Holmgren, you know, wrote some of the original um, guidance for permaculture, but they borrowed heavily from indigenous practices and they don't own permaculture. However, there are a lot of practitioners and teachers of permaculture, a lot of permaculture designers, meaning they've gotten their permaculture design certificate, which is a 72 hour course. And then they can turn around and teach permaculture. The expansion, the, um, I would say exponential expansion of the number of PDC permaculture design certificate courses that I have seen offered in the last several years um, has been startling to me as someone who's done permaculture for um, 26 years now. So, so reading through those comments, the number one criticism was PDCs and the ways that perma bros and the ways that um, you know teachers in general have kind of commodified permaculture, especially have made this structure of taking a PDC and charging anywhere from fifteen hundred dollars all the way up to have seen PDCs charge eleven thousand dollars for a seventy-two hour course, which they can spread out up to over two weeks, require you to do labor on their farm as well as the fees that are um, included. Many PDCs. Actually, before I get into that rant, just check out my video. Um, I have two videos actually on PDCs and concerns, criticisms. I would say responses in the comments to those videos were, um, you know, sometimes extremely defensive by folks who teach PDCs. And I'm not knocking all teachers of PDCs, but I think that when we hear hundreds of people saying, the way the PDCs are now run as kind of a racket and a quick money-making tool is something that turns people off to permaculture. We need to hear that. And we need to hear the other concerns about PDCs as well. They're ableist, they're childist, they're um, gatekeepy, they're expensive, and they are not in keeping with the original ethics of permaculture. 
So, you know, check out, check out those videos if you're interested in, um, you know, further discussion on PDCs. But overwhelmingly in this comment section, that was the number one gripe. Don't like PDCs, don't like how permaculture has turned into bros hawking their master classes and their PDC courses for large sums of money and people not getting very much out of it or feeling that it is almost a grift in some way. It is just another one of those kind of internet rackets. Permaculture was not like that when I started. In fact, it was really difficult to find a place to take a PDC. Um, I don't have a PDC on purpose. I choose not to for all the reasons I talk about in those videos. Other concerns were not scalable, people think it can't feed the world, and a whole lot of other um, assumptions that people make about permaculture that, well, not even assumptions, a whole lot of ways they see permaculture being pitched from a very particular segment of folks. And I wanna talk about that for a minute because I think the way that people preach about permaculture, for lack of a better word, really shapes the way that people perceive it. And there's a lot of people who are presenting permaculture um, as a particular uh, way of doing things that is not actually my understanding of permaculture. And so, so I think there's some confusion between like, what is a legitimate gripe of permaculture and what is, I don't like the version of permaculture that these guys over here are teaching. So in this comment section, I left my list as someone who has practiced permaculture for 26 and actively practiced it, like more than just an academic practice of reading and internalizing the permaculture principles and permaculture worldview, but actually practicing it in the real world for more than 22 years. Um, I have my own ways that I have seen and believe that permaculture deserves some critique. So I wanna talk about those here. Okay, number one, permaculture has been co-opted by capitalism. Now, you might say, Angela, you are saying that on your YouTube channel where you get revenue from ads, where you have a Patreon and folks can donate to it in order to help um, compensate you for your time and expertise. Very true. I started this channel out as a way to help other folks who couldn't access PDCs for whatever reason. At the time I started it, I had young children and we were on a really, really um, tight budget and the cost and lack of childcare and lack of time that I could give um, prevented me from being able to take a PDC. And so I thought, let's have, let's have a, a, a channel from which I, I made no money for many years talking about my experience participating in and practicing permaculture. That's how this started. I don't keep anything behind a paywall. I don't teach PDCs. I don't teach master classes. I don't require folks to have a membership in any way, shape or form to access my material. That's really important to me. Permaculture, however, has become another hustle for all kinds of folks who wanna make a buck on the internet. And I'm not saying you can't teach permaculture in a way that you should be fairly compensated, but I am saying that permaculture is not your get rich quick scheme. Permaculture is not a way to become wealthy. And when permaculture gets co-opted by capitalism, it becomes an ugly and twisted version of itself. The minute permaculture, especially PDCs and other kinds of workshops and master classes, were marketed as a profitable way to run your farm, your business, or your homestead, folks became dependent on charging large amounts of money for their PDCs. And their farms were not able to stay in the black without PDCs. And the framework of take a PDC, teach a PDC became a pyramid scam, where every libertarian permabro who took a PDC turned around and thought he was able to teach one. You can look online at the proliferation of PDCs and see that this is true. Not only PDCs, but things like advanced PDCs, people spending thousands of dollars on non-accredited courses that don't get them any kind of specific certification and are very expensive. And all of the material in a PDC is available for free. Um, not only online, not only more organically in formats like reading Mollison's Permaculture 1 and 2, watching permaculture creators on the internet, reading permaculture books from the library. But um, I realize some people learn better hands-on and workshops are totally valid. But, but I think using permaculture as a gimmicky way to make money is gross. Permaculture was designed for subsistence communities and it should be accessible to everybody. It shouldn't be accessible to people who can afford to pay a very large amount of money. And also thinking that a 72 hour course in permaculture is all you need to be able to teach permaculture, um, you know, has made it again a pyramid scam. 
I feel the minute that you tie permaculture application to PDCs and to a fee structure and to a structure where folks are counting on making a lot of money, um, it's lost the plot. Number two, and there's a little bit of overlap between all of these. Number two is preppers, libertarians, perma bros, taking the gardening and design elements of permaculture and the things that they like out of permaculture, cherry picking from it and leaving behind the three ethics of earth care, people care, and fair share. When you strip permaculture of the three ethics, when you take only what you like and try and shoehorn it into your libertarian beliefs or your toxic individualism, homesteading beliefs, it ceases to be permaculture. People who think that permaculture is gardening or some kind of agricultural practice, and that is it, are missing the bulk of what permaculture is about. A lot of what I see marketed as permaculture by perma bros selling their courses or on their YouTube channels or on their blogs or on their other social media is not actually permaculture. It is prepping or libertarian homesteading with some aspects of permaculture put in. If you notice, a lot of my content is about social permaculture. And if you've not read Luby McNamara's books, I will link to them down below. Social permaculture is a key element that I think honestly, I probably will get folks coming at me in the comments, I think is something that can be lacking when we dilute the voices of women in permaculture. Those of us who are largely responsible for interpersonal relationships and community care, we understand how key the social aspects of permaculture are. And you cannot leave those by the wayside and glom onto toxic individualism and have it be permaculture. Gardening is not permaculture. Homesteading is not permaculture. Self-sufficiency is not permaculture. Community interdependence People care, fair share, those are permaculture practices that you cannot toss to the side and still call what you are doing and teaching and selling to your audience permaculture. The dilution of permaculture by folks who want to co-mingle it with prepping and individualistic um, kind of American ideologies are doing a real harm. And not only that, I would argue that the way they have diluted permaculture is a big component of what makes it so distasteful and so worthy of criticism by folks outside of, of the philosophy itself. Number three, and this is something I've actually gotten lots of questions about in my comments over the years, and it's something that I keep wrestling with, like how do I talk about this as a white woman? Um, permaculture has lifted all kinds of indigenous skills and knowledge and repackaged them and presented them through the framework of white Western culture. Permaculture has a real problem with colonialism. Permaculture was coined by some white dudes from Australia. That doesn't mean that the skills and practices originated with those two men. But even more than that, it's more than just the taking and packaging and profiting off of indigenous knowledge and practice. It is the actual physical colonialism that is a big problem. If I had a nickel for every time that some European or American white dude bragged about how cheap and easy it is to do permaculture in Central America, sure, it's so expensive in the US, it's so expensive in the UK, like just move to Belize or Panama or Costa Rica or Puerto Rico and um, or Guatemala and buy yourself a big swath of land and live like a king. The land is cheap, the labor is cheap, the weather is beautiful. And they are completely blind to the colonialism um, inherent in that way of, of attempting to get land to do their permaculture. If that is what you're doing, if you are playing colonialist in a, another country, you are not practicing permaculture. And every time I try and bring this up in the permaculture groups that I admin, people come at me and call me a reversed ra reverse racist. They say that I am um, too woke. They say that I am virtue signaling. And I'm not. And using those kinds of phrases as an attempt to shut down a really important conversation that we need to have in permaculture about colonialism and lifting indigenous knowledge and, and exploiting indigenous land and indigenous communities to do our permaculture. Um, we, are, we are not doing permaculture right and we absolutely should be open to harsh critique from those outside of the movement. I have wanted to talk about permaculture and colonialism for a long time. I don't feel that I am the right person to do a deep dive into that subject. If you are an indigenous practitioner of permaculture or of traditional skills that have been um, rebranded and repackaged and put out as permaculture, and you would like to do a guest spot on this YouTube channel, please reach out to me. 
please reach out to me because I don't feel that it's my place to run that conversation. I feel that it's my place to host folks and platform folks who it is their spot. It is their place. It is their, their corner and they should be talking. Yes. I want to have that subject be one that we can explore in a really honest way. I don't feel that I'm the right person to lead that conversation. I also feel like other white people have no business shutting down that conversation in permaculture. <sighs> So number four, and this was also a common criticism in this comment section, was woo in permaculture. Woo being like squishy, non-scientific practices, kind of, you know, hippie, um, maybe new age, not backed up by science practices, and some of them outright like shown to be ineffective and how that appeals to people in permaculture. You might think, because I have been a little bit of a hippie earth mama kind of person, that woo-tastic practices would appeal to me. They really don't. I am the daughter of a physician. I have a degree in biology. I'm from a family full of scientists and physicians, and I have no problem with Western medicine. I have no problem with um, a lot of Western practices, and I'm really big on evidence-based practice. Permaculture can get conflated with the woo-tastic practices that are ineffective that some people utilize and are important to them. And I don't mean to diminish if you have like a, if you have kind of a practice that is criticized by others as not being founded in science and it's meaningful and important to you, you can fold that into your permaculture practice. Folks who engage in woo and um, find it meaningful to them and want to use it in their permaculture should be allowed to do so. But you know, woo-tastic practices are not requisite to doing permaculture. Permaculture is not religious, it is inclusive, and that means that um, you can utilize permaculture and fold it into your own private personal practices. It doesn't mean that you have to engage in those practices in order to do permaculture. Things like electroculture and other, again, like I keep coming back to permabras, things that are gimmicky and absolutely rooted in woo and not in good agricultural practice that get hawked by permabros. It's arguable as to whether that is woo or grift, but those things are not required for permaculture. The fact that permaculture and wanting to live a life that is um, as as ethical as we can, that is as much as we can possibly be in harmony with nature and with our fellow humans around us, having connection with people and the planet, the fact that that appeals to kind of hippie folks who engage in wootastic practices, it's not a condemnation of permaculture. Okay, number five, and by mentioning this one at all, I have talked to my patrons about this a little bit. I will inevitably get comments down below, but I will definitely get DMs on my Facebook. Um, and on Instagram as well, uh, with folks threatening me, with folks um, bringing up grape and uh, assault and uh, saying all kinds of gross, misogynistic, violent things to me because I bring up this subject. Every time I bring it up, I get pretty awful things sent into my inbox. Uh, permaculture is heavily influenced by white men. This means the applications of some of its elements are, this means the application of some of the elements of the 12 principles are done with a heavily skewed way of seeing the world in a way that is often misogynistic, is often racist, is often ableist, is often childist. It doesn't mean that all men who teach permaculture have this problem, but when you have a very narrow set of people doing most of the interpreting and application and the teaching of the 12 principles and of the rest of permaculture, um, it is applied through their framework, their way of interfacing with the world. I am really glad to see more and more of the voices of non-male and non-white people in permaculture being pushed to the forefront. I will link down below to a couple of permaculture podcasts that I really like that heavily platform um, non-white and non-male folks and give them a voice and let them contribute their experience in permaculture. And I think that's really important. The diversity of worldviews and varying perspectives is super important if we're gonna have permaculture be inclusive and applicable to all people. So those are kind of the five main criticisms I have of permaculture after practicing it for more than 20 years. A lot of those criticisms are things that I have seen kind of well up within the permaculture community within the last seven or eight years. And some of them have been there since the beginning, like the colonialism, like the white dude problem, uh, the commodification and, you know, 
attempt to foist capitalism onto permaculture or attempt to take permaculture and dilute it to make it something less than it really was. Um, those are more recent. And I would say there is a difference between folks having very real, very real criticisms of what permaculture actually is and the it's passing period for the students. And the folks who are only seeing the way permaculture is presented by people who I would argue don't actually understand what permaculture is, aren't qualified to teach it, and are presenting a poor facsimile of some certain elements of permaculture and interweaving it with their own philosophy that is actually in, in antithetical to permaculture. I was gonna say antagonistic, it is antagonistic, and opposed to permaculture, and believing that that's what permaculture is. So if you're interested in learning about what permaculture actually is, I hope that you will check out my videos on my channel here. I hope that you will check out the podcast that I'm gonna to link to down below, particularly Sustainable World Radio and Green Dreamer. Um, and look for those inclusive voices, the diversity of folks practicing permaculture because they believe in creating regenerative ways of interfacing with the planet and building truly just and equitable communities of people. And realize that permaculture is not what you are seeing hawked to you by some perma bro who wants you to pay $3,500 to take his PDC. I already know that by putting this out, I am going to get a lot of really nasty comments and really defensive comments. I would encourage folks, if, if you felt that anything I said in this video really stung and really felt like an insult directed at you, I would ask why. Are any of the ways that you are interfacing with permaculture problematic? Are you applying your own external framework that is not in alignment with permaculture and you didn't like that I criticized it in this video? If you took things I said in this video or any of the other criticisms folks had on this post very personally and want to get defensive. Sit with yourself and think about why that is. If you feel compelled to send me a nasty gram over this video, I would just encourage you to save your energy and to use that on yourself instead. Permaculture principle, apply self-regulation and accept feedback. We can disagree in this community. We can be open to criticism in this community. We can't do permaculture if we aren't working on refining ourselves and refining our understanding of permaculture, if we aren't willing to accept criticism, if we aren't willing to be introspective, and we aren't willing to openly and honestly look at the problems in permaculture. In permaculture, nothing is a waste. The process, the process of applying self-regulation, of accepting feedback, of trying to do better, makes your permaculture better, it makes it more effective. It will make you a person who is more at peace and who feels that you are living with integrity and with alignment of the permaculture ethics and whatever other personal ethics you may hold. So as hard as it can be to check our egos, to set our pride aside and to be willing to accept criticism, we need to do it for the sake of building a more sustainable world. If you have other problems that you have found with permaculture, if you have criticisms I haven't thought of or haven't brought up in this video, if you wanna have an honest discourse about real issues with permaculture and ways that we can make it better and we can do justice um, by each other and for the planet, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. I read everybody's comments and I really appreciate the conversations that often kind of erupt in the comment section between folks. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe. That is a great way that you can support the work of this channel and I will be back really soon.